Good morning, fellow Epson traders. This is Jeff, and welcome to the Daily Scan for Monday, July 15th, 2013. Well, uh, for today, our red star is retail sales, and then a couple of gold stars after that. But the red stars, of course, are the ones that we keep a close eye on. And if you just kind of like skim over the whole week, there are a lot of red stars except for Friday. So um, it should be pretty interesting week. Actually, nothing on Friday. Let's take a look down here. Early equity settlement. Market is open, which is... Uh, Looks kind of strange that there's nothing scheduled for Friday uh, at this time and probably won't add anything because a lot of these things are uh, pretty much scheduled solidly in advance. All right, let's take a look at the foreign markets for this morning. Um, we'll look at Asia because they're closed. Um, everything, all indexes ended up over in Asia for Monday and in Europe um, about midday over there roughly and uh, all of them are up except for Ibex which is down a bit all right uh, moving right along okay here we are taking a look at the gold futures up slightly Gold's at 1281. Oil is uh, above $105 at the moment. And natural gas is uh, kind of wallowing around, although almost a 1% move today. That's, that's pretty heavy. All right, uh, let's take a look at our account. You can see that I was uh, peeking at Netflix there to see what the heck uh, could be done about that. Um, the um, pump up in volatility on the front month um, options here for the July 4 expiration there's been a significant increase in volatility there which is uh, really suppressing our current price which makes me hesitant to exit uh, the lower end of this at 195 at this point so I'm a little bit uh, a little bit indecisive there I guess you might say and I'm uh, maybe irrationally rationalizing staying in this trade Selgene though is making me a little bit nervous yet as well uh, take a peek at that chart here um, Friday was kind of an indecisive day it was down slightly from its previous rise so if we wanted to take a peek to see what kind of opening we might be looking at it looks like it might open down if you're looking at the midpoint here at 128 maybe roughly so it may open down and we're looking for it to get um, our break-even is here at 130.81 and um, our shorts at 130. So if we can get it to open down here, then we can breathe a big sigh of relief because this particular one is expiring this Friday. Um, what else do we have going on here? Uh, um, some other ones that kind of look like they're underwater, but these are way out in August. So, um, <clears throat> they have earnings coming up, so an increase in volatility is suppressing the current day prices on those two, which may, have, may equate to making a mistake and getting in on these with uh, earnings coming up. Should it just stuck with ETFs uh, in earnings season. This is a lesson learned and I'm going to add it to my trading plan um, as a modification like a little asterisk to just say 
don't do these um, as um, <clears throat> earnings approaches because an increase in volatility suppresses the current price. It doesn't do anything to your max gain, but if you're planning on getting out before earnings, it's going to hurt you. I think that now is, um, now I'm beginning to realize this after several expirations, although I never really had this happen to me that much, but uh, going for these um, August trades with uh, earnings in between is not really a good idea, because even, even on the months after earning, the expirations after earning, uh, volatility does increase on those as well. So we're looking, um, hopefully, at a correction this week. We've had, you know, like several days up in a row, uh, which is kind of, a, let's look at the um, futures on the ES here. This is a pretty incredible here. What, what do we got here? This one's up, this one's up. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 days in a row. That's pretty darn unbelievable. Although, um, if we were to analyze this weekly chart here, we would see that there might be some down days in here. So, never closed below the previous day here for 11 days in a row. So, we might be looking for a little bit of a correction, at least in the general overall market. So, let's jump right over into our A-plus list. Of course, I will be uh, keeping an eye on um, our current positions today a little bit better than I have been. Been really busy the end of last week. Uh, hopefully, it didn't cost me a whole heck of a lot of money. Some of these will come back and, and we'll be okay. But that's just hopefulness. <laughs> All right, uh, taking a look at Apple to start out. Um, still in a uh, questionable trend direction here. Don't really have one. And, of course, uh, we're not going to be, like, doing anything with this, um, with earnings coming up, especially for Apple. And I can't imagine, they're talking about an iWatch, and I, I can't imagine what an iWatch would do. But then again, I don't work at Apple, and I'm not creative like them, and I thought that an iPhone would be kind of dorky, but <laughs> look look at me with a little bit of egg on my face. But anyway, nothing going on there as far as the directional trade is concerned. Um, Amazon making a really, really nice move here. Uh, very impressed with the power in this uh, particular move. And uh, I think that they signed, I think that they're... Um, Video on demand or their streaming video services are uh, beginning to take off and they're getting agreements and contracts with networks for programming. There's a program called Under the Dome, um, which is exclusive to Amazon Prime that uh, I'm watching. I watched the third episode last night. It's a pretty interesting um, little show. Uh, Baidu, of course, Back here on Amazon, we have our target set. Sorry about that. Got carried away. We have our target set down here, and it's not even coming close. So let's move this over because it's going to take it some while to work itself back down there. Baidu. I cleaned up a bunch of drawings on charts again um, yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And it's very... Think or swim with chart drawings is very confusing so um, turns out that overall I think I'm beginning to understand here when you say uh, if you say delete old drawings here it says drawings on Baidu there's 11 old ones uh, older than 30 days is zero so I guess you could say that I don't know do you see 11 drawings on here I don't understand that then it says total drawings on all my charts is 1,027. This was over 2,500 before I went through and started cleaning things up. 
So um, I think this 30 days, I'm not sure if 30 days applies to a monthly chart. I you know, I just, I really don't know because it might be 30 weeks or something. Who knows? It might be 30 periods. I, I really don't understand that. And it doesn't seem to work all that well either. So anyway, I've been cleaning them up. Um, we're looking for um, our targets down here for Baidu. We're waiting for it to come down, give us an entry. Celgene is uh, also in trouble. It's in the money. We took a look at that. Um, it might actually open down today, but we're looking for another entry here, and we have our target set. CF uh, had a scary day here, came back down, so uh, we have expiration on this this Friday, and we hope that it stays down. Let's see, possible opening, can't really determine one way or the other maybe open down slightly if you're looking at the midpoint here Chipotle um, actually we were looking for a hook here and with the earnings I'm going to take a pass on it we are in here with this July bull put we collected a dollar forty on that so we're just going to hang in there on that Gold might be a good play if there's anything here that anybody might be interested in. We have a downtrend. We have no target set. Uh, we would be look, looking for a hook right here, actually. So let's just do that, and we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. We're still in a downtrend. Google. Google has earnings um, the night before expiration, which is typical for them. They like to do that. They like to play with your mind, I guess you might say. Uh, not touching that one. Not touching it for earnings at all. Goldman Sachs. Uh, I believe we have, yes, we have a bear call on that, and it's uh, threatening here. We have earnings coming up. We're just going to have to see what happens there. Um, if I can get out of it early I will. 717 is Wednesday. So we'll keep an eye on this one and see if we can take any profit out of that. Right now we're at uh, negative 265. Okay LinkedIn we are looking to jump in on this one. Uh, we have earnings is pretty far out. So I'm going to put an alert on LinkedIn. I may have had one last week. I'm going to put another one on. And let's take a look and see here. Oh, let's see. Yeah, we have, um, what are we looking at? Market maker move. Right, let's go back to that to here. This earnings are way out here. Alright, so if we were to take this first expiration in August. What are we looking at here? 8.1. Yes, okay, so that is the highest IV, so that would be uh, the one that's affected the most. Uh, the problem is, as IV increases, it gets very difficult to do a profitable short-term um, vertical on this. So, looking at this, uh, let's see here. Uh, I would do probably uh, maybe a end of July, last Friday in July expiration. This uh, particular um, IV number probably won't move a whole heck of a lot. So if I was to do anything, that would be a July 4 expiration. All right, so... MasterCard, still have an alert on that, 
has not triggered. And yes, MasterCard. So it did not have a very good day. Now, is, does it have, it doesn't have uh, multiple weeks. This Thursday, the next week will come out. So this isn't a very good candidate. So I'm not interested in that anymore. So I am going to take that off. All right, Netflix. We already took a took a look at that Priceline. Uh, Priceline is hot, 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 um, but no entries. Nowhere near the target. Panera Bread. Uh, no, no multiple weeklies. Earnings coming up. There's really no play there. I'll just take a pass at whatever it might be showing me here. Tesla. Uh, looking for it to come down, give us an entry. But we have earnings here. It should be interesting to see what happens with them. And then Visa, the alert did trigger on that. I did not get in. And there are no multiple uh, weekly offerings on that. So I am taking a pass on that. Remove this. Well, I'll leave the target on there just so they know that I had one. <laughs> and we'll see how it works after that. That's just, again, um, as this uh, implied volatility increases, um, it's just you can't collect any um, theta. I mean, when volatility increases, theta tends to zero out or go negative. So, we're just staying away from that. All right. Um, and then I wanted to just uh, kind of add a new feature. Some, I call it the uh, neat stuff that I found out. All right. So, um, you know that I'm an Amazon freak. And I just want to push, or have you, not push. I'm not uh, promoting this, or I'm not even getting any money off of it. Although I, I do have... Uh, I never make any money off of Amazon. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just buy stuff from them. But anyway, um, this paleo diet, you may want to take a look at that. And the Amazon Prime has a video called uh, The Perfect Human Diet. And it's a one-hour um, documentary on the human diet ever since uh, we stood up on two feet. And they talk about what's screwed up about it these days. And there's another book you might want to pick up called The Wheat Belly. So if you're into dieting or anything like that, uh, look at uh, one of these books. Watch the video on Amazon Prime called um, The Perfect Human Diet. And uh, check out uh, any sort of books related to Wheat Belly. All right, so you talk about corny stuff in my videos trying to go out on a light note. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.